I'm going to show you how to back up Exchange Server 2019 on a 2019 Windows Server in Backup Exec 21. So we've got this Exchange Server that's listed here. It says it's never been backed up. I just added the agent to it recently and restarted it. So now I'm going to choose to back up, and I'm going to choose the backup to disk option. And I have the option, because this is a virtual machine, to go with virtual-based backup or agent-based backup. I'm going to choose the agent-based backup because it gives me more control over the backup itself. So instead of just putting all the control into the host, I can put the control into the virtual machine, which is a little better in my case. You may choose otherwise. The advantage to doing the backup of the virtual machine is it's easier to restore the virtual machine the way it was. The advantage to doing it as an agent backup, where it pushes the agent to the virtual machine and lets the virtual machine control its own destiny, is that you end up being able to either restore this off to a physical machine or a virtual machine, although there is some additional setup that uh, comes into play. Now, we see on the left-hand side, the Microsoft Information Store is there. So if I click on Edit, we can see I have two different mailbox databases. So I'm going to choose those, and then I'm going to go over to where it says Edit on the backup side. And I'm going to choose Microsoft Exchange. So I've got several different options here. We have at the top Microsoft Exchange options. Performing a consistency check before the backup is a good idea. You want to make sure that everything's working properly, especially using the volume shadow copy service because you'll need to be able to back up open files. And we do want to continue even if the consistency backup check fails. It doesn't mean we may not be getting any data. It just means we may not be getting all the data. And this interesting part here is for high availability server. Now you have to be using at least Exchange 2007 or later, but you're also going to want to be using a database availability group, which means that you've got more than one Exchange server that is syncing copies back and forth to each other. So that keeps the databases running even if one of the servers goes down. Now there's an active copy, and that's the one that is sending the data to the clients, to their Outlook application, for instance. And then there's a passive copy. So if you do have two or more Exchange servers in your LAN, then I suggest that you choose the backup from the passive copy first. And if not available, try the active copy. So this recommended one I also recommend. You also have the option to just do the passive copy and fail if, if not possible, or back up from the active copy. Now, the only time I've ever found it useful to back up from the active copy is when the other copies of the databases are sitting in another location, such as in a remote office, and the connection is slow. So you don't want to do a passive copy backup from a much slower connection over a VPN tunnel, for instance. It may use up all of the bandwidth that the office has. Otherwise, uh, the passive copy is really the way to go, and that's because it has the least impact to the users. Under the backup method, we have the full option. So when you're doing a full database backup, you do want to truncate the logs. So that means it's going to flush the logs out, and that way it won't continue to fill up your hard drive. Because if the logs are not flushed out or truncated, then eventually it will just continue to fill up your drive. Now, if you have lots of space and you're going to flush the logs another way, then you can just choose to do a full copy without truncating the logs. Now we have incremental. So when you're running an incremental backup instead of a full backup of just exchange, I also recommend that you truncate the logs. However, you do have the option to not do that and just run a copy of everything. And this last part is also very important as well. Use backup exec granular recovery technology. So what that allows us to do is to individually backup and restore mailboxes instead of doing the entire mailbox database. So for instance, if a user calls you up and says, hey, I've got an email that was sent from two months ago. I need to get it recovered. Well, then you can do that without having to restore the entire database off to another server, which would take hours. So make sure that this box is checked. And click OK there. And I'm going to go back in and uncheck the C drive, E drive, etc. I'm just going to want to back up the Exchange database because in another video I'm going to do a restore and I don't want it to take too long to back this up so I can do that mailbox restore. So I'll click OK and then the mailboxes will start to back up.
since the job was a scheduled job, I went ahead and right clicked on it and chose to run now. So that way I don't have to wait until the next Friday night for it to run. And in a little bit, we should start seeing the byte count go up and the megabytes per minute as well. And we can see now that backup data is actually running. And we'll check back to do a restore once it's complete.